Good morning, everybody, and welcome again to It's Time for Change Talk Ministries. We're here today to say thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule today. It's Sunday, the 4th of July weekend. You could be anywhere today, but you chose to be in our service, and I'm very, very thankful. My husband and I do not take it lightly, whether you're at the beachfront listening and watching, whether you have that early barbecue going on right now, wherever you may be right now, whether it's home in your living room, driving in your car, we're at work or wherever you're at, we're very thankful that you're here. We realize that this is Independence Day. And I believe, you know, free, let freedom ring everywhere. But there's somebody who had to pay an ultimate price for our freedom. And that's Jesus Christ himself. The word said who the Son has set free is free indeed. Has anybody bought a home and you had the deed to your home? Did anybody buy a car and they gave you a title to that car? You paid for that. You earned that. That was a deed. Jesus Christ did a deed. It was indeed when he hung and bled on Calvary for us and for our freedom. I'm very thankful for that this morning. I want to go before the Lord today in prayer. If there's any prayer requests, I want you all to get um, used to chatting on our um, box, ch chatting in on our box. Hey, if you need prayer for this or prayer for that. Or go to our um, social media channels. Even our website, it's time for change 12.org, or go into our Instagram, it's time for change, or even our YouTube channel, it's time for change. We want to make sure that we're active in your life and active in the community. We want to pray for you outside on Wednesdays and for our motivational men and outside on Sunday mornings. We want to make sure you're involved and we're involved in your life. And it's just not a two day a week ministry, it's an all the time ministry. It's not just for local here in our community, but it's worldwide that we want to reach everybody, every soul, and every need. God gave us a ministry to do what he's called us to do. It's not localized, it's globalized. We love every each and every one of you. I'm gonna pray this morning that your ears will hear what the word and what the spirit is saying to the church in this hour and in this time, that we'll be ready when Jesus comes back, that we'll be ready for this end time revival, that we'll be ready for the ministry that God has chose you to do in this time. In Jesus' name, Lord, we love you and we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that we're not consumed. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives, our family lives, those that are around us, the ones that we come in contact with. We're very thankful for that. And this morning, God, we ask you to open up our ears and our understanding to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church in this hour and in this time. We're thanking you right now for independence. We're thanking you for freedom that you gave to us, that you hung, bled, and died on Calvary for us to be free. We're trusting, Lord God, that your word will penetrate our heart, that we go this week and the weeks to come that we can carry it in our heart, Lord God. We love you and we thank you for all that you're doing. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Give us a wave. Give us a shout out. Give us an amen. Give us something to let us know that you're there. God bless you. Pastor Les, it's platform. Amen, everyone. Thank you, First Lady Nita. That was powerful. And uh, I am so excited to be here today. It is Independence Day, uh, July 4th, however you want to say that. But I want to, before I get into the word, I want to say this, that I appreciate my wife and I want her to know that. Um, she has a lot going on in her personal life that's going on. And, uh, but she never, ever compromises her walk with God, her prayer, uh, her encouragement, and I just want her to know that I appreciate that. I'm going to go before the Lord. We're going to read this verse, and then we're going to get started. So let's go before the Lord and read his word. Hebrews 9, 16 through 22 says this. Hebrews 9, 16 through 22. For where a testament is, there also must be the necessity, be the death of a tester. For a testament is of force, after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the tester liveth. Whereon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled the blood, both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. Revelation 12 and 11 says, and they overcame him, him being Satan, by the blood of the lamb 
and by the word of their testimony, and they love not they love not themselves unto death. So this morning I want to talk on this topic just for a little while. And like my wife said, you may be starting your barbecue. You may be at the beach right now listening. You may be at home, wherever you're listening at. I want you to listen just for a few minutes. And I want to talk to you on this topic, the true cost of freedom. The true cost of freedom. At the mention, at the very mention of the blood of Jesus, the Bible says that, that the enemy, the devil, the demons, they tremble. They tremble at that name and they tremble at that blood. When you start talking about the blood of Jesus, you get the attention of hell. You get the attention of heaven. You get the attention of the spirit realm when you start talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the precious blood of Jesus. It serves as an atonement or a covering for our sins. It is the blood of Jesus that sets you free from the grasp of sin this morning. So whatever you may think that you're going through, whatever you may think that you have to handle and you have to do, the blood is more powerful this morning than anything that you could possibly come up against. There have been some notable men and women that have walked the face of this earth. And I don't want to take away from our civil rights leaders. I don't want to take away from anybody, our service men and women, because I'm a part of that fraternity. I don't want to take away from them. But there is nobody that has walked the face of this earth that's been able to do what Jesus has been able to do. There's nobody that's been able to accomplish what Jesus was able to accomplish. He's the only man that could cover you in red, but yet you're white as snow. The, the song says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The true cost of freedom is the shedding of blood on Calvary's cross. We can be here this morning. We can be listening this morning. We can be doing whatever we're doing this morning. But if Jesus Christ had to shed his blood, we still would not be free. If he had to shed his blood on Calvary, we would could be here, but we would still be under the bondage of sin. But because of the shedding of blood, because of the power of blood, we are free here today. And I want you to know that spiritually, you're not bound anymore by the law. You're not bound by those things because Jesus shed his blood on Calvary and he shed that blood so you and I could be free today. You are free in Jesus name. Genesis 3 and 21 tells us this, that and the Lord God made clothing from the animal skins for Adam and his wife. As you know, he told them to stay away from the tree, but they decided that they wanted to eat it. So when sin entered the world, when sin entered the atmosphere, when sin entered the garden, that had to be some kind of way to wash that sin away. So in order to obtain the animal skin, blood had to be shed. Adam and Eve, after realizing that they were naked, the Bible says they covered themselves in fig leaves. However, fig leaves would never do what the blood was destined to do. Only the blood that could provide a covering for us. Only a, the blood could make us free. Only the blood can wash away. And when Jesus covered them in the blood, I want you to know this morning that he wasn't necessarily covering the nakedness. He was covering the sin. He made them free this morning, in that morning, in every other morning, by the shedding of blood. Where there's the shedding of blood, there is the remission of sin. The power of darkness can never come against or never stand against the blood of Jesus. Uh, our ancestors, they understood that. I remember growing up as a child and how they pled, they would plead the blood and, and they would pray over us uh, and they would call out in Jesus name. Uh, and we would, would, would believe in that word. We would believe in that power. We would believe that it was happening just because they said it in Jesus name, just because they Please, that blood. I want you to know that blood still has power today. It still has the power to set you free today. It still has the power to wash you clean today. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the true cost of freedom this morning. Have you been washed 
in his blood? That's my question for you this morning. What I mean by wash, have you been baptized and, and had your sins washed away? It's the cost of freedom this morning. Only the blood can make us free. God had already made a plan because he knew that men would eventually sin. But he had a plan in place to bring us back in relationship with him. Genesis 4. Let me give you another example. Genesis 4. God accepted Abel's sacrifice of the lamb, but he did not accept Cain's. Why? He rejected Cain's sacrifice of fruits and vegetables. God was saying at that time that a sacrifice through the blood was the only sacrifice that was going to be acceptable unto him. Cain had not understood that. As Christians today, they misunderstand the importance of the blood. No doubt, Cain had worked hard to provide and gather his sacrifice. However, no matter how hard he worked, it could not provide a covering for his sin. No matter how hard he worked, he could not set him see himself free from sin. I want us to know no matter how hard we work, we can't work our way into heaven. Let me say that again. I don't care how hard you work. You cannot work your way into heaven. You have to be, uh, you have to go by Calvary. You have to go by the cross. The blood has to be applied. That's the true cost of freedom this morning. It's the blood. I want us to understand that God saved us and he loved us in so much that he sacrificed all that he had to deliver us and to free us from the sin of bondage and oppression. And once you're free, the Bible says don't go back. Don't put yourself under the bondage that God has delivered you from. You are free today in Jesus' name. I remember a song saying, I'm free to dance and I'm free to run. I'm free to praise and I'm free to worship. You're free this morning in Jesus' name. Why? Because he paid the price that you and I could not, could not pay. We are free today because Jesus decided that he was going to rope him. God decided he was going to rope himself in fresh. Come as a man. Die on a cross. Shed a blood. And I'm telling you today, it still has power this morning. We are free today in Jesus' name. There's always a cost to freedom. Our service, men and women, is a cost to freedom. Some, they gave it all that they had, but it was a cost. Our civil rights leaders, they gave their life, they gave their livelihood. It's a cost to freedom. But in not taking anything from them, they did all that, and I'm glad they did but if Jesus Christ, if he had to shed his blood, then it would be without benefit. There's a cost to freedom this morning. Death is an enemy. It binds you. But the blood of Jesus, it sets you free. It defeats death. Life is in the blood, nothing else. And the eternal life that Jesus promised to every one of us who believes in him, that life is in the blood. Salvation is in the blood. The power to live is in the blood. The power of the blood can free you from death. When Moses was leading the people of God out of Egypt, God instructed them in the 11th chapter of Exodus to kill a perfect lamb, a lamb with no physical defect, and sprinkle his blood up on the doorpost. And when the death angel came, it would pass over the Hebrews' home, and where God's instruction was followed, Everyone will survive. Where there was no blood of pride, then everyone in the house would die. Every firstborn, I'm sorry, would die. I want you to know that death is an enemy to you, but blood is life. It's, uh, it's the cost that has to be paid in order for us to be free. Someone had to pay it, and Jesus did it freely. Some animal had to do it in the Old Testament so that the sins of, of the Israelites could be rolled back for another year. There's always 
Blood has to be shed for someone to be free. There'll always blood have to be shed for someone to be free. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's always blood has to be shed for someone to be free. Jesus did that for us this morning. Yeah. We're free spiritually. We're free. And I thank God for that. Le Leviticus 17 11 says, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement or a covering for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the souls. Only God's perfect lamb, which was Jesus Christ, can protect us from death and give us everlasting life. It's that Jesus Christ, the only one that can free us from the power of sin, that can free us from the power of the enemy, that can free us from the grasp of the enemy. I thank God this morning. I thank God that we're free. I thank God that we can worship him. I thank God that we can praise him. I thank God that we can lift him up whenever we want to because we are free today in Jesus name. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 and 55 says, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall it be brought the past the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? And O grave, where is your victory? The blood has the power to save this morning. And I want to tell someone that's listening, if you find yourself this morning that don't know which way to go, and you don't think that your sins can be forgiven. And you don't think that God can do anything in your life. I want you to know that the blood has power to reach back. And the blood has power to wash away every thought, every sin, every transgression. The blood has the power this morning to set you free. You are free today in Jesus' name. Because the true cross of freedom is the blood of Jesus. The power has the blood the, the power has to, the blood has the power to save. Rahab the harlot, along with her entire family, was saved from destruction. They was instructed in the second chapter of Joshua to tie a scarlet thread on her window. No lamb was available to her. So the scarlet thread that she used to lure the Hebrew spies to safety was used as a representative of the blood. And when the walls of Jericho fell, her home was the only home in the entire city that was saved from destruction. Why? Because the blood was applied to her home. The blood was streaming down from her door and from her window. And when the destruction came, she was saved by the blood. I want you to know that that was the cost of her freedom. That was the cost of her freedom. And that's the cost of our freedom this morning. It's the blood of Jesus. The blood covers our sin and the water washes them away. John 19, 33 and 34 says, and when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was dead already. And they break not his legs, but one of the soldiers with the spear pierced his side and forthwith came out blood and water. I want you to know that the blood covers our sins. It started on Calvary's cross and it's still flowing today. That water, it washes away our sins. It's still washing away today. It is the blood and the water that gives us freedom today in Jesus' name. That is why baptism is so important. It washes away our sins. It's, if, let me plug this in right now. If you've never been baptized in Jesus' name, if you never had your sins washed away, now now is the time to do it. If you're in, in the Montgomery area and we would gladly baptize you in Jesus name. And if you're not in the Montgomery area, we will help you find somebody that will baptize you to wash your sins away because God has already paid the price. You are free today. There's no need to carry around the sin in the luggage that holds you down. You're free today in Jesus name. The blood has the power to heal this morning. 
In the, in the New Test in the Old Testament, the prescribed method for cleansing a, lip, a leper was to place the blood of the lamb on his or her right ear, right thumb, and big toe. The blood cleansed the people from all their diseases. It is the blood today that still heals. It is the blood today that still heals. What more can I say? It is the blood today that still heals. It continues to do it. The prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 53 and 5, but he was wounded and crushed for our sins. He was beaten that we might have peace. He was whipped and we were healed. I want you to know it's the blood that did it. It's the blood that set you free from, 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 from diseases. It is the blood that set you free from wounds. It is the blood that heals you this morning and you are healed today in Jesus name. You are free today in Jesus name. You are able to call upon the name of Jesus today because he shed his blood that we can be released from the grips of the law. We're not living under the law. We're in grace right now. 1 Peter 2 and 24 said he personally, understand, he personalized it. He personally carried our sins in his own body on the cross so we could be dead to sin and live for what is right. You have been healed by his wounds. Jesus, the Christ, the Bible said he was whipped, but he was whipped 39 times with the whip that had a bone at the end of it. It broke his skin. It tore at his flesh. It, 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 it was just, it, it was painful, but Jesus, he had to do that so that we could be free this morning. You don't have to answer to the enemy this morning. You don't have to answer to Satan. You don't even have to have a conversation with him this morning because he is behind you. You're looking forward to, to the author and the finisher of your faith. He said it is finished. And when he said it is finished, it is finished. You, you are no longer bound by the law. You are no longer bound by sin. You are free today in Jesus name. The true cross cost of freedom is the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary's cross. Knowing that the pleading of the blood of Jesus will bring deliverance to the true Christian believer. It is a powerful weapon. The blood agrees with the word and the spirit. 1 John 5, 7 and 8 says, So we have three witnesses, the spirit the water and the blood and all three of those agree. There is no substitute for the blood of Jesus. It is through his sacrifice that we are justified in the sight of the almighty God. It is because of his sacrifice that we are free. He is the lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. I want you to know this morning regardless of where you may find yourself, regardless of what situation you may be in. You may have woke up this morning and you may have had pain in your body. You have woke up this morning and you just don't know what the day holds. Uh, I want you to know that Jesus holds the future in his hand. He holds you in his hand. He paid a price already that you could be free. You're not bound by anything. You're not bound by the law. We're no longer under the law this morning, but we're under the grace of our almighty God. Death is an enemy to us, but the blood brings freedom. You're free today in Jesus' name. The blood is precious because it is precious to God. The blood is, is, is precious God showed mankind from the beginning how precious and how powerful it was. So the true cost of freedom happened on Calvary. The true cost of freedom happened before you and I was even born. The true cost of freedom happened when God himself decided to come a sacrifice for a loss in a dying world. Don't let the enemy convince you. 
that you're still bound by whatever it is that you did in life. Wherever life took you, whatever experiences you had, whatever you have said, whatever you have done, don't let the enemy convince you that you're still bound by that. You are free today in Jesus' name. And I'm telling you, the power of Jesus, the power of his blood, it will never lose its power. Whether today, tomorrow, or next week, the blood will still have power to heal you. The blood will still have power to deliver you. The blood will still have power to set you free. It will never lose his power. And I'm telling you, there's nothing like the blood of Jesus. As I close this morning, I want us to remember what Jesus said on the cross. I want us to take time this morning and reflect on the powerful statement that Jesus said. He said, it is finished. It is finished. If I could put a period behind finish, Jesus was saying, it is over. It is over. I paid the price. I've come to do. I, I've accomplished what I came to do. I, I, I came to do it. It is done. It is finished. It is over. I want you to know this morning that you are free because it is over. You're not bound by Satan. You're not bound by the law. You're not bound by your sins. You're not bound by your lifestyle. You're not bound by anything. But there's power in the blood of Jesus. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you for this opportunity, God. Lord, that we can worship you. But more importantly, God, we thank you for the blood, God, that you set us free. We thank you for the blood, God, that washed away our sins. We thank you for the blood, oh God, Lord, that made us whole this morning. We thank you, God, because it still has power. We thank you, Lord, because of who you are. You know who we are. You know our name, oh God. Lord, you know how many hairs on our head, oh God. You know where we are, oh God. Lord, you know everything about us this morning. And we thank you this morning. We thank you for freedom this morning. Freedom in your name. Freedom to call upon your name. Freedom to worship you this morning. We bless you this morning. We thank you, God. We give you all honor, all praise, and all glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you. I want you to enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you next, su next Sunday, 9 a.m. Central, for the word this coming week for our Motivational Minute. God bless you. Remember that you're free in Jesus' name.